This video provides a general overview with the operating instructions and safety procedures for using General's Gen I video pipe inspection and location systems. Disregarding any of the safety procedures while using the Gen I can result in serious personal injury or damage to the equipment. This video does not include a complete list of all the recommended safety procedures and does not provide specific instructions for every application. Disregarding any of the safety procedures while using the Gen I can result in serious personal injury or damage to the equipment. General Pipe Cleaner's Gen I video pipe inspection and location system is designed to inspect and locate buried sewer lines, pipes, and cables. Remember these safety rules as you operate the system. Check the power cord to make sure there are no cuts or frays. Be sure the unit is plugged into a grounded outlet. Verify that the ground is connected. If the power cord is not long enough, use a three-wire heavy-duty extension cord no more than 50 feet in length. Make sure its grounding prong is in place. Using an ungrounded extension cord is very dangerous. Never use the camera in a drain that has a chemical drain cleaner in it. Do not operate the camera while standing in water. Do not use the equipment in confined areas where combustible or toxic fumes may be present. Be wary of buried power lines, utilities, and other hazards. Before you dig, contact One Call and any utility companies that do not subscribe to One Call. Have all underground pipes and cables located and marked before digging in the area. Read the operator's manual before using the equipment. Contact General Pipe Cleaners if you have any questions about operation, maintenance, or equipment use. Let's begin with the Gen I-3. Remove the cover and snap the sunshield into place if necessary. Plug the power cord into the AC connection on the command module. Or if you're in a remote location, you may use the DC cord to draw power from the power outlet in your vehicle. Plug the interface cord from the reel into the cable reel connection on the command module. Turn on the command module by pressing the power button. Then press the power button on the TV monitor. A picture will appear on the screen. If you're using the standard reel, it may contain 200, 300, or 400 feet of push rod capable of inspecting 3 inch to 10 inch lines. Or you may have the mini reel containing 100 or 200 feet of push rod for viewing 2 inch to 4 inch lines. If you're using the Gen I Junior, position the unit on a stable surface. The Junior may be operated in the vertical or horizontal positions. Loosen the knob and open the monitor cover. Position the monitor to a suitable viewing angle and lift the sun visor. Plug the power cord into the power connection on the side of the Junior. If you're in a remote location, you may use the optional rechargeable 12-volt battery that lasts up to three hours. Or use a DC cord to draw power from the power outlet in your vehicle. Turn the unit on by pressing the green power button on the monitor. A picture will appear on the screen. Your unit may contain either 100 feet of micro push rod to inspect one and a half to three inch lines, or 200 feet of mini push rod to view two inch to four inch drain lines. Be sure to release the reel brake before you begin. Both the Gen I-3 and Gen I Junior can be attached to an external recording device through the video and audio out connections. The Gen I G3 locator can detect three types of signal. 512 hertz and 874 hertz signals transmitted from inspection cameras or SONs. 60 hertz or 50 hertz radiating from active power lines or 65 kilohertz from an external transmitter used to locate buried metal pipe and utilities. Let's start with an overview of the controls. The on-off button turns the unit on and off. Press it once to turn it on. The antenna select button lets you choose from three antenna configurations. Twin Peak, most often used for camera and sound locating, gives a very precise location. The signal strength peaks when the locator is over the target being located. Null is often used for line location with an external locator when locating in congested areas. The signal drops to minimum strength when the locator is over the line being located. And the left-right arrow, which uses arrows to guide the operator to the target, 
The arrows indicate the position of the locator relative to the line being located. When the locator is over the target, both arrows display and two beeps sound. Signal strength is shown by a bar graph at the top of the display window and in a numeric display. It's also indicated by an audio tone. The up arrow button is used to increase the gain. If the signal is below 20%, press the up button once to raise the gain or increase the signal to approximately 50%. The down arrow button is used to decrease the gain or signal strength. If the signal is above 80%, Press the down button once to lower the gain or decrease the signal to approximately 50%. The frequency button selects the operating frequency. The available frequencies are 512 hertz and 874 hertz for camera or sound location. 60 hertz or 50 hertz from active buried power lines or 65 kilohertz for locating buried metal pipes and utilities. To use this feature, an external transmitter is required. The depth button allows you to estimate the depth of a properly located signal source. The G3 locator has four additional functions that can be accessed by pressing and holding the depth button and pressing a second button. The locator has a backlit screen to help you see the display in poorly lit areas. To turn on the backlight, press and hold the depth button and press antenna select. The locator has four volume levels, off, low, medium, and high. To select the volume setting, press and hold depth and press the up button. You have a choice of four units of measure in which the depth is displayed. 